Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, numbers are going to tell stories, reports are going to be able to predict our future, uh, and we're going to talk about inflation, interest rates, the Federal Reserve, and so on. I'm going to break it into five points, uh, simple points, and you know, you gotta understand it because it's going to affect your daily lives. Anyways, after two weeks of not posting, I hope you guys still watch my videos. Uh, well, let's get straight to it. And now to my first point, which is inflation's journey. So right now, headline inflation, CPI, is at 3.4%, which has actually went up since last month. Last month was 3.1%. And for core inflation, PCE, excluding food and energy, is at 3.9%, um, which has come down from 4%. So actually, even though the core inflation has come down, uh, it, but they're excluding food and energy, which is very strong elements actually. So I'm going to talk about uh, energy. So actually energy did come down inflation by 2% year over year overall. Gasoline has come down 1.9%. Uh, utility gas has come down 13.8%. Uh, and actually, electricity has actually went up by 3.3%. Uh, but as you can see, actually, uh, energy actually uh, contributes a lot. So in terms of core inflation excluding food and energy in the analysis, it's quite a big thing. Uh, quite a big thing. So you should pay attention to energy as well when you look at inflation, uh, even though core inflation is what the Fed likes to measure with. At the same time, it's also kind of an illusion since uh, energy price is something we spend a lot on. And now to my second point, which is the Federal Reserve's plan. So the Federal Reserve thing that were actually successfully maneuvered out of inflation, which is definitely not 100% true yet, but they think they were on the course of lowering down and going down. So they want to have three rate cuts this year and they want to print more money as well. But why would they want to print more money? Isn't cutting rates enough for economic stimulation, uh, meaning more money flow? Well, for them, it's no, because they want to keep the people happy until the election comes. You know, more people can spend, the happier they are. So yeah, they want to keep them happy as quick as possible, so they're going to print soon. And they're also going to lower rates. So people are going to be happy. Anyways, at, uh, at this point of time, the Fed is taking out about $95 billion out of the economy uh, every month. And that's the limit, of course. And soon they're going to lower that and the trend is going to change to them printing money instead of taking money out of the economy. So that's uh, that's what's going to happen, and that process is going to be called quantitative easing. And now to my third point, I'm going to be unpacking the CPI report. So the CPI uh, report includes four important elements, which is energy, food, shelter, and services. So I'm going to start with food. Food overall has increased 2.7% year over year. So yeah, it has gone up. Some has actually become more affordable, meaning uh, some food has gone down in prices, but uh, some of them went up in more, so we end up with a number of 2.7 uh, increase. And for energy, I've already said about it just now, it went down. And for housing, which is um, shelter, it actually went up by 6.2% which is normal for housing or shelter to go up in price, but it was never a good thing for people who wants to buy a house, of course. Of course, there are times that housing will decrease in price when there is a bad economic time and people are desperate for money, but now it's not really a time. People are holding their shelters. I mean, they are holding the properties and the prices are increasing. And on to services which is wages. Wages has increased by 5.3%. Uh, and the Fed doesn't like that. They want it to be 2%. Why? Because they think the inflation is coming down 
and now that it's coming down, if wages increase faster than inflation, also means that eventually people have more money to spend. And if it doesn't come out two percent soon, uh, when people have more money to spend, potentially inflation is going to spike again, which would be absolutely horrible. So they they will do everything to avoid that. And now to my fourth point, which is the economic recession challenge. So the recession is like a um, big boss in a video game for the economy. And many experts and analysis have suggested that we might already be in a recession right now. And also they suggest that the first two quarters of the year might be bad. And the back of the year though would be good. That's why they have concluded, not concluded, but like estimated a 0.9% GDP by the end of the year. So uh, the first two quarters are gonna be kinda bad, not the worst, but this, the second half of the year is going to be able to produce a positive uh, impact to, for the GDP to be at least positive. And so in the next two quarters, means six months you can uh you can expect like unemployment hikes and suffering from consumers and businesses of course the recession is going to be caused by high rates because the rates are going to maintain high even though they're going to cut three times this year they do plan on uh, completely cutting it to the rate they feel comfortable by the end of around 2026 or 2026 onwards they're going to start ending the rate cuts so yes interest rates is still going to be high for a while and that's why recession is coming but you might ask well even if they why would they end the rate cuts at 2026 if it's going to be like comfortable at the second half of this year well, if they too quickly cut it, they could cause an inflation again. So they do not want to do that. And on to my fifth point, which is the countdown to rate cuts. So everybody got their eyes on January 31st, the meeting where the Fed is going to decide. And everybody is anticipating what to do, what they're going to do, you know, or whether they're going to leave it untouched or they're going to increase or decrease the interest rates. But I'm just going to tell you right now that they're not going to touch the interest rates. It's going to be a pause. They're not going to increase or decrease. And that's because they don't want to decrease it so fast. They still want to leave the interest rates on a high for a slightly longer time. And also, the for voting for inside the Federal Reserve, they have made a voting that by March, there's a 67% chance that they're going to decrease the interest rates and by May there's a 96% chance they're going to decrease the interest rates so you should focus more on those two meetings of course uh, trying to know what's going to happen next is very crucial since you can decide what's going to happen to the uh, to your investments and stuff like that because you want to know what's the next move of the Fed which would crucially impact the economy but I'm just going to tell you now that January will be left untouched and March and May is going to be the more crucial meeting. So in conclusion, um, this thing is definitely very complicated for the Fed to decide because um, they have to worry about inflation, interest rates and recession at the same time. Controlling one thing could affect both things on different ways. So they have to carefully navigate it. And understanding this is very important, definitely, because if you don't understand it, it's going to affect your daily lives directly and you're not going to see it, see it coming, which would be absolutely horrible. Anyways, just remember that we're all on the same track. We're trying to know how the uh, economy is going to end up and we're just trying to know how to place our investments and how to play our cards. And we're in this journey together. We're learning together. Anyways, this will be the end of the video. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you like and subscribe. I hope to see you again. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye.